A pretty amazing announcement was made in Singapore the other day when it comes to how they are going to evolve their response to COVID-19. They're going to head in a new direction. And it's a direction that Canadians should pay attention to and ask themselves, hmm, why can't we do this here? Little hint, we can. So what's Singapore doing? They are going to learn to live with COVID. That's what their government ministers are saying. Basically, they say, look, we got to acknowledge that this is an endemic seasonal illness, meaning this thing's not going away. They're saying they're not doing this zero transmission thing anymore, that COVID zero thing that some people really pushed for, which means get to zero cases of this virus, complete elimination, eradication. This is not a virus that you do that for, as more and more experts are saying. This is something that's going to be around in some sense for the rest of our natural lives. So what are you going to do about it? Well, Singapore, like most other countries, has been doing a vaccine rollout. And they say, first of all, you have to embrace the fact that these vaccines have been bringing down hospitalizations and deaths just drastically. So, you know, if there's no progress after vaccines, what was the point of doing the vaccination rollout? They say what they're going to do is basically stop quarantining travelers, stop quarantining close contacts of people who test positive. And here's the interesting one. Stop reporting daily case counts, at least with the fanfare they do. Now, the truth is, when it came to influenza, Public Health Agency of Canada does produce data on influenza, uh, seasonal influenza. If you want to talk about the various cases, the hospitalizations and so forth, you're free to do so, uh, which is how, for instance, a lot of pediatricians were able to determine that COVID-19 is actually less severe in kids than the flu is because they had something like 1,500 on average hospitalizations from flu with kids in previous years in Canada. And uh, the COVID hospitalizations are only about 1,300. Although I should note, story, uh, an item that I actually broke a few weeks ago was that only about a third of those COVID hospitalizations were actually for COVID, people suffering uh, from having the symptoms of coronavirus. In fact, many of them were a kid coming in for, say, a broken arm, and then they, they test everyone for COVID who comes in, and they found out, oh, this kid had asymptomatic COVID. We, we didn't know that. Zero symptoms, not spreading it to anyone, but uh, anyway, they tally him on the hospitalizations list for COVID. Anyway, I digress, but part of the reason I guess I point all that out is once you stop reporting the daily case counts, I mean, that's a thing that stops, I think, driving a lot of the calls for, oh, okay, maybe now we can reopen. Oh, no, we've got to lock up again and so forth. But if you approach it in a more evolved and balanced way that Singapore is discussing doing, maybe you talk about doing other mitigating measures to protect the vulnerable, for instance, which the vaccine rollout, that was pretty much the part of it anyway, as opposed to this idea that we have to shut down low risk activities in perpetuity for low risk individuals. Anyway, lots to see there in the latest announcement for Singapore. Really admirable to see a country sort of take that leap and want to talk about doing things a better way and also just embracing all of this knowledge that we have learned the past year and a half. One thing that is so frustrating in the way that so many people here in Canada talk about the virus, and not just regular folks, but even, even doctors on the news and television and radio and so forth, is they act like we, we don't have the information about who is most at risk and and uh, who has been most hard hit by this virus and where it actually transmits and so forth. But we do, we have reams of information. So let's just embrace that big data and make smarter choices so we can get on with our lives in a responsible fashion, which it seems like Singapore plans to do. Good for them.